Please stand if you're able. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. God's mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Together. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal one, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together the collect of the dead. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven, to be the true bread which gives life to the world. Evermore give us this bread, that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinabab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The 
The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 23. We will recite the psalm in unison. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory Glory to you, you, Lord Lord Christ. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's work works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. Then he went and washed and came back, able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes open? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is, where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the, to the Pharisee the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. 
Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that now he sees nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples? Then they, then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not, do not know where he comes from. The man answered them, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, for he does li but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You are born entirely in sin, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and for those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sinned. But now that you say, We see, your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. It's interesting to think about being a storyteller, <clears throat> and that's really kind of what I consider myself more than a preacher. I'm not an academic preacher per se, 
but I like to tell stories. And I'm, I've become over the years appreciative of the art of storytelling. And sometimes you wonder why storytellers tell stories the way they do. And you think about some of the movies that you have seen over the years. I remember the first time I saw Jaws, and while the shark isn't the hero, the shark is the main character of the story, or at least the catalyst for everything that happens. And so once the shark disappears for that first time, we know the shark is just out there waiting to do his business. And a storyteller probably understands that the the presence of the hero distracts from the greater story which is lying underneath. And so they move the, sto the hero off screen to allow the plot and the, and the story to build and to paint a more human picture of the world. And I wondered to myself, and I've asked this more than a couple of times, what would the world be like if it operated in the way that we wanted it to work, or in the way that I wanted it to work. And thankfully, the world doesn't work in the way that I want it to work because I'm not sure I would do any better job than God does. I'm sure I would do a better job than God does. How well would things go if we were in charge? How well would it be if we were the ones who made the rules and decided who was in and who was out? And thankfully, in our case as Christians, God has already solved that problem for us. We don't have to worry about that. God promises to lead God's people and the people who trust in God in fulfilling ways and endeavors which are rewarding to them and to God. God promises to lead people where they need to go and do the things that they need to do. Ironically, I find that there was a lot of comfort in our lives, even in the midst of chaos and upheaval. Sometimes the mundane life, the day-to-day -day existence, is a blessing because we get a chance to take a breath and to not have to worry about what is happening just outside the door, down the road. We can just wonder about ourselves. Thankfully, God leads and makes the necessary decisions for God's kingdom to survive and to thrive. Sometimes we just need to hear that simple story to remember God's presence. Some days we need to hear something which is so familiar to us, like the 23rd Psalm, which is one of the best known parts of Scripture, to hear that again and again because it serves as the constant reminder to us that no matter what, God sustains God's people. And yet our problem with God's simplicity and God's directness as a leader and a guide is sometimes we try to make things more complicated and in doing so we lose sight of God and God's presence. Or even worse, we feel like God has left us alone and unafraid, even when we are afraid. But just like God leads Samuel to see the chosen leader of God's people among the least and the unappreciated, God stands with us when we are between the times where we are keenly aware of God and the times when we feel like God is so far away from us. But I'd like to focus a little bit more on the story from the gospel today. The gospel story of the man born blind and his relationship with Jesus. As we hear in this story, Jesus meets the man where he is, sitting in a place where he is ostracized by society. Society pities him or blames him for his own condition. The disciples make that story obviously clear. Was it this man's sin or this parents that made this man born blind? The man was deemed cursed from the outset without good reason. 
And so Jesus dispels all of the myths that they believe by healing the man on Jesus' term. Jesus does it on the Sabbath by doing work, making mud with spit and, and dirt. But he does it without fanfare. He doesn't make it so that everybody sees except that those who are right there. And in fact, interestingly in this story, the healing happens unbidden by the man. Jesus just happens upon him, heals him, and the man goes on his way. And then, Jesus disappears from the story. And ironically, this story is probably the longest absence of Jesus from the story in the gospel in the meat of the gospel after his birth and just before his death. And so we hear the man explain those things that he experienced and how he understands what happened. Even when he is questioned by those in authority, he continues to tell the story as he understands it. Not in the way that they want him to tell the story, but in the way that he understands and has experienced the story even when he is declared a worthless sinner, an outcast, unworthy of participation in polite society, he continues to stand by the story of Jesus healing him and making him a whole person. The man was, in fact, responsible for carrying the restorative message of Christ and a relationship with God through Christ. This man's story that we hear today from the fringe is moving and it motivates others to do likewise, to be moved and to understand God's presence. The man's story reminds us that our understanding as humans of God being, Im being immediately, but it begins immediately, but evolves over time and when we resist it from time to time, we continue to see God's presence in the world around us. This is of a special point for us. We, in fact, have a vital relationship with God through Christ, even when we don't feel like it. Even when the world tells us that we don't have a vital relationship with God, maybe not overtly, but tacitly, we are reminded today that we must hear the story of salvation over and over again to not forget the promises made by God and Jesus, to refresh our commitment to the places where God is calling us to serve, and to remember that God puts us in places to heal and to find God's presence in those around us, the outcasts in society, those who are marginalized and those who are looked down upon by the refined folks. The ones who, we are the ones who realize and appreciate God's unmerited grace found in Christ. And that's the story that we share with our society. We are reminded today from this story that when we feel lost, we must turn back to God to find God's guidance and to find others who are struggling in the world to find God's guidance and God's hope in the world around us by reaching out to others, by being ones who carry the positive message of Christ in the individual, and to help us understand that while we struggle, God never abandons us. God is always walking with us and carrying us forward. We are the ones who help carry the message to those who have forgotten God's blessing and commitment to healing humanity. Us, other believers like us in small churches and large, in the corners of the world where, we believe, where people believe that they are second-class citizens. Because in God's economy, there are no second-class citizens. We are reminded today in our readings and in our worship that we, are, we should not get lost when we feel like God is gone or that we are simply for sitting in church. God is with us in those times we need to remember and realize that God 
is carrying us, and we are the ones who carry God's story to the world. Today, we are invited to remember again, to pay attention to the repeated story, and to remember that in God's world, it's not of human design. It's not completely put together. We have people who understand the world differently than we do, but they are still God's people. And we do not live a life which is constrained by our own understanding of reality or our belief. We are constrained by our experience. And God is with us and God sends us into the world carrying a message of hope and a message which tells us that we are God's own people, chosen, blessed, and redeemed. And the story of the man born blind is one which should invite us to look for God in places that we may forget to look for him today and tomorrow. Where is God calling you to open your eyes and to open the eyes of the community around us today and forever? Amen. Amen. Before you stand as you are able and turning to page six in your order of worship, let us recite the Nicene Creed, our ancient confession of faith. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and revel in glory, revel, reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
remembering especially those impacted by war and conflict in Ukraine and Russia, guide the people of this land and of all nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Slava Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember those on our prayer list. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend you to your, we commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also Amen. with you. Greet one another in the peace of Christ. Peace be with you. Peace, peace be with you. Ascribe to the Lord the honor of his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts.
please stand as you are able. Our service continues with the Great Thanksgiving Eucharistic Prayer A, found on page 9 in the Order of Worship. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has, has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Post-communion prayer was found on page 10 of your order of worship. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Bow down before the Lord. Look down in mercy, Lord, on your people who kneel before you, and grant that those whom you have nourished with your word and sacraments may bring forth fruit worthy of repentance. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for some brief announcements. stand for the dismissal. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.